I hope whatever wherever I am, whatever place I'm at, and I and I would say that for all, all my friends in the industry, wherever they they are in five years as well, that they're happy and at peace. Quiero hablar sobre un cortometraje que, bueno, yo lo vi en fragmentos, que es, se llama The Eight Board. Quisiera preguntarte sobre qué recuerdas de este debut y dónde se puede ver completo el cortometraje. John watch fragments from the short film The Airboard, so he asked where we can find it and what memories do you got from this short film. Ah, so The Arbor... I didn't distribute it, so I'm I'm not the person to ask. I'm sure they've distributed it um, online, but I, as you may know, remember, I wrote it, and for me, it was. I honestly, I didn't expect it to get made. I love science fiction, and I've always loved science fiction. So, for me, it was. I just sat down, and in the space of about maybe two hours, I just kind of got it all on the page out of my head and I love all of these concepts around dystopians and dysto yeah dystopian worlds and how how that shines a light on I think things we go through in in the world today so that's where that's that's where the inspiration for that came from and then um again as you may know I acted in it when they made the film as well and one very particular memory for me was We were shooting. There's one, there's one scene. I don't know if you've seen it outside a club, and it's very, very dark. So we shot at night, but it was. I'm pretty sure it was winter time, or it was a time of year in England when it was quite cold. So I realize that's a very broad <laughs> spectrum of months, but it was in time in England when it was very cold, and I remember being, you know, very, very freezing and there was like a pub nearby and everyone was quite envious because everyone inside the pub was very warm and we were all outside being like oh my god it's so, so cold but um it was amazing to see that to see that script be realized just because for me it also flagged up I had a very specific vision when I wrote it and of course when you give it to somebody else to make then it's in their hands you know you 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 discover how other people interpret what you originally had in your brain. So that was very interesting for me to bear witness to as well. Excelente. También hay un cortometraje que se llama Rhapsody. Es sobre un, un hombre cuestionándose qué pasaría en ese bar. Pues te pregunto, ¿qué significa esta historia a la vez de tu personaje? Que es bastante raro. Ese sí lo pude ver por Daily Motion. Luckily, John had the opportunity to watch Rhapsody. Uh, he feels that this short film is kind of weird. So the question is, what, how do you feel about your character, about this particular short film? Tell us anything. Wow. So, I mean, Dan, who created it, is such a fascinating and amazing filmmaker. He's a very fascinating person in general. And I always kind of enjoyed Um, the little time that I had to work with him. So I actually got to see a lot of his um, process throughout the film, not just as an actor, to really get a sense of the scope of what he was trying to create. So when I shot my, my parts as my character, it was very much me surrendering to the story that he wanted to tell. And he's very good with actors in terms of breaking down 
what he feels their purpose is within the story, their purpose and their drive. And even if it's very strange, even if it's, you know, a 30 second, this is this is what they represent as an as a symbol, as opposed to being a full character. He's very good at getting that across. So I will say I get what you mean in terms of it being a film that's quite out there, but because it's so out there I very much just trusted in his vision in the moment when I was shooting he was like this is what you need to do and I was like okay you know whatever you want from me I will I'll do it no problem buena respuesta además hay un título que la verdad es bastante interesante es como no es el fin del mundo es más bien como la invasión de los extraterrestres quisiera hablar sobre qué opinión tiene al respecto sobre este tema sobre el tema de cómo sería desde su perspectiva a cómo se vio en Invasion Planet Earth. What is your position or your opinion about the possible reality of something like Invasion Planet Earth happening? As I told you, I lo I love science fiction. I love all of this stuff. So I'm I'm very much in the boat that I I believe life is out there somewhere. I, I really love Star Trek. I'm a big Star Trek and Star Wars fan. So, you know, there's that whole thing where it's like um, in Star Trek, they believe that there will be first contact at some point that comes to Earth. Um, I don't think it'll happen quite like that. You know, like all those movies, like not just um, Invasion Planet Earth, but even like Independence Day or or stuff like that. I don't believe that it might necessarily happen quite like that. But I do think it's really possible that life from somewhere else can like we'll meet it in some way but i i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily predict that it would happen like like an invasion planet earth está también el tema de ahora sí el fin del mundo que se llama ultimate cosplay es algo interesante cuál es tu cuál es tu perspectiva o posición al respecto a cómo sería el fin del mundo bueno todavía no es hora pero algo que quieras de pronto decir en particular o qué conspiración has creído. Pero esta película tiene que ver con ese tema, Ultimate Cosplay. Sí, claro. Ok, it's, it's kind of weird because the name of the movie, I'm happy that John asked because I really love that subject, Ultimate Cosplay, somehow got to do with the end of the world. I don't know, tell us more why it's related and what is your vision about the end of the world. And Please tell me more about uh, because I love all the cosplay so the culture is all around the world. We got cosplayers here on the channel, so tell us anything you want. The thing about with the thing about ultimate cos cosplay that I find quite beautiful is there is this complete contrast between something so innocent and so joyful that. I, like I really admire cosplayers like the amount of time and money and dedication that they put into crafting these costumes like I, I have a friend that does a lot of cosplay and I'm always like what you do is amazing like and it's and you know for so many people it, it's a hobby they might make a bit of money off it but it's you know it's just something they do out of passion and to have it contrasted with <laughs> with the end of the world There's something quite beautiful, something I really enjoy in stories a lot is when you see and deal with people that go through the mundane versus like against the backdrop of something that is so big, that is so that is so big and catastrophic and terrible. And yet they are clinging on to, you know, these these little these little things that make them that make them human, that that give them something to hold on to. Those are a book that I really love called, oh, I say I love it and I've forgotten the name, I'm really bad with names in general, uh, Station Eleven, I think, where it deals with quite a similar catastrophic, lots of people have died, it's quite the end of the end of the world-ish scenario, and yet you have these people that are going around performing Shakespeare, there's a traveling company and they perform Shakespeare, and it, it's so jarring, you think it's so jarring, it's so weird, like everything's so terrible and people are trying to survive and and you have these people going around, you know, performing Shakespeare, what? That's so strange, but actually I, I think that that encapsulates what's really beautiful about humanity, where in great times of crisis, and I guess we saw this, you know, even during COVID, people find things that are mundane and escapist and are quite beautiful to, you know, find ways to 
to cope and to live and to feel alive and feel human. As for the whole end of the world thing, I do find, I find that that kind of stuff, I guess it ties into my interest with science fiction in general anyway, but I do find that really interesting because it does make you think about what you would do. You know, how how am I living my everyday life knowing that things could happen at any minute? And not, like, none of us really think about that day to day. You know, none of us really think about, oh, I'm, I'm going to wake up today and suddenly an asteroid is going to appear. I'm going to wake up today and, you know, I don't know, aliens are going to come down. None of us really think about that. But actually, when you when you read stories like that or when you think about scenarios you, like that, you do, I think in, in a weird way, it does connect you back to yourself where you go, actually, am I, am I living the way I want to live? Is the world that I want to be a part of or that I'm creating, does it feel in tune with with me and, and what I'm what I'm trying to do. I hope that answers your question. And I really want to watch Ultimate Cosplay. <laughs> I love what you... Ok, John. Está también el título de 12. Eso sí, es una historia ya es de amor. Yo quisiera, bueno, más bien es poder que nos comentes sobre cuál es tu perspectiva del amor, preferente al cine, qué tanto han cambiado y cuál es también tu posición pues, del amor. Porque... Habla sobre un amor clásico, antiguo, no sé, ¿qué opina ella? Ok, from sci-fi to love, tell us about 12, tell us about your position, about that subject, about this beautiful project, go ahead. Wow, ok, um, I never, you know what, I never thought I'd talk about 12 much, ever, so it's, it's strange and both cool that you've asked me about it. I I love Shakespeare. I'm a massive I'm I'm a nerd, I'm a massive nerd in general, but I'm I'm definitely a nerd for Shakespeare. And there was an opportunity when I was in my final year of university to have the chance to make a a feature film with some really good equipment. And I remember talking to friends about it, and everyone kind of being like, "Okay, we we you know we might not have this chance. Let's just do it. Let's just see what happens." And Twelfth Night is my favorite. Shakespeare film Shakespeare Shakespeare film what am I on Shakespeare play I absolutely absolutely love it and I just thought you know what let's just adapt it see what happens and there are so many there were so many brilliant actors and people that I'd worked with while at uni and many of which I'm you know I'm still friends with today and we just created um this film and what was really interesting was Everybody was pretty much under the age of 21, I should say. So there were characters within 12 that are um, a lot older, you know, characters like Sir Toby and Sir Andrew that are a lot older than the age that the eight than the age of, you know, the actors that would be playing those kind of roles. And we tried to find a way to reflect that the fact that everybody would be on the young side and obviously there are a lot of characters within the play that are on the younger more youthful sides but it wasn't the sweeping cast um that we ended up with so it was interesting because it was the first time i'd really directed and produced a film that big for that long um and that quickly and it was very interesting for me because a lot of what i'd learnt I guess had really come more from observing other directors and producers that I'd had the chance to see working especially when I was a lot younger so I hadn't really done a lot of film there was kind of a period in my life between I guess GCSEs and uni where I didn't really spend a lot of time um, around film people so a lot in terms of how we work in the industry today I think has changed and progressed and gotten better But when I was shooting that film back then, um, it was very much, a, oh my goodness, okay, I just have this opportunity and I'll see what I can do. And I'm, I'm the kind of person where when I'm not happy with how I've done on something, I like remember it forever. I don't, I don't ever forget it. So if I had the chance to do something like that again today, I, I think I would have adapted differently and managed to set differently and I would have done a lot differently. But You know, I, I love love. I find love very fascinating. I know that's that might be a, a weird way to put it, but I, fi I find it fascinating in terms of how, especially today, 
with all the technology in the world we have, we still can't quite figure it out. <laughs> like with technology, all of us want to be like, we're figuring more and more stuff out, right? That's the, that's the hope, the expectation. Everything gets better. So we can communicate better. We can learn better. We can make people's lives easier. But with love, like we, we still have not, it's not really, it's not really gotten better. We haven't figured much out more <laughs> in any way. <laughs> So that that's very that's very interesting for me. And when we the time period we set twelve in was kind of that turn that that weird period where people started getting mobile phones, but we didn't really quite have smartphones yet. So there was no risk of like people meeting each other on dating apps. But you did have that chance of you know you they are younger people that are living a faster paced life than say when Shakespeare wrote the play. So that was quite interesting to mull over and think about sorry that was a very long-winded answer but i hope some of that makes sense don't worry no you can take your time <laughs> it's good it's good bueno ahora sí se viene la pregunta que la tiene que estaba esperando la de john wick parte 4 quería pues felicitarla porque yo sé que tienes un rol que ya es parte del elenco y quisiera preguntarle sobre qué podemos esperar de mía y también este, ¿cómo considera ya este punto de John Wick como un desenlace final o qué, qué sorpresas? Tell us about Mia, congratulations, I freaking love, and John of course love it, that saga, what we can expect, I think like worldwide, the premiere will be now in this weekend in, in Latinoamérica, tell us whatever you want about Mia, about John Wick, about your participation, Go ahead, we love it. <laughs> um, firstly, muchas gracias. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I've seen I've seen the movie three times now, so I can say, as people that love the franchise, I do think this will end up being your favorites. Everything that Chad has created and built within the first three movies that has made it so beloved, from the action sequences to Keanu's character to you know, the greater world around Keanu and the continental and all of that. I think he ups it whenever, you know, every interview that I've I've had them do, they're like, oh, they've, we've upped it. And you kind of go, how can you up it? But I can genuinely say I, they've really, they've elevated everything that has made the franchise so beloved. Mia is, do, I think I can say this now, Mia, Mia is the daughter of Donnie Yen's character in the film. So um, Donnie Yen, the legend that's Donnie Yen. Oh my God. One of my favorite actors ever. Right, he's yes. so incredible. Yes. Oh, so incredible. So she she is connected to him and you'll see in the movie how that has shaped him as a character and, and how that connects him to John and to some of the other characters in the film. I can see the fight sequences are insane insane the first time i saw it i was just like i was kind of very overwhelmed by actually how much chad and keanu had had managed to craft with those fight sequences and in the subsequent views that i've been lucky enough to have of it i've kind of been able to really absorb myself in technically how much they've tried to do and how much storytelling they do in all of these moments and it is honestly so so impressive and i i talked to chad um, very briefly after the Paris screening and I was like here are all the little things that I've I've looked at and tell me if like how much of it is your genius how much of it is just that it's beautiful coincidence and it is so incredible how much they have really paid attention to detail for everything so I'm I'm, I'm gonna say my favorite bit is the final act. There's a really, really cool sequence in the final act that every audience that I've um, had the pleasure of seeing it with has all had <laughs> such amazing reactions to it. So um, that's not that everything else isn't incredible because everything else is, but you you don't kind of, ah, uh, they just, they do, they honestly, they just manage, they do magic with the movie it, it's it's really good and i it's one of those movies where i would say genuinely it gets better the more you watch it and i can genuinely say that it's true because i've watched it more than once and it's definitely a film that i hope a lot of people enjoy on the big screen because you you really get that full sense of what they're trying to show off what i let my friend told uh, uh -huh. you're the second person 
that had worked alongside Donnie Yen on the has been on the channel and they the one is Mar Strange, one 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 great actor and martial artist from the from UK. And now you wow, now I'm more hyped. No, he's one of my heroes. I love I love uh, Asian cinema, I love um, martial arts and he's a legend. He's a legend. He wow. is. Ah oh. actually I will say um everyone stay until the end. There's a post credit scene. I'm sure some reviewers might mention it, but for the people that might miss it, there's a post credit scene. So genuinely stay until the very, very end. Um, and you won't be disappointed. John, ahí escena post créditos. Continúa. Wow. Bueno, lo último sería cómo ve tu cine dentro de cinco años y también sobre qué otras expectativas. Bueno, no sé. Solo pregunto. Eh, yo sé que después de John Wick va a haber una quinta parte y va a haber el continental. No sé si te podamos ver en las próximas o cuál es tu futuro referente al cine. Okay, it, this is a good question uh, because I don't know if you can tell us if you will do part from the Nets, John Witt, or the Continental, but knowing that you are not only an actress, but a producer, a screenwriter, a director, how do you see yourself in your career in the next five years? Goodness, you know, as I'm sure you've, you've garnered from so many people that you've spoken to and had the privilege of interviewing, it's It's not an easy industry to to be in. I think it's th that's not just for anybody in film, even you know people like yourselves that work in media. It's things change so quickly that it's very hard to I feel like it, you know people in certain other industries you can sit down, you can go actually this is how I can really progress very systematically and move up and up and up and and grow who I am in terms of my vocation. With this I honestly, I have no idea. And the funny thing was, before I before I got this job, I was genuinely questioning my place in the industry. And, you know, this is something that I wanted to do since I was a kid. And then you kind of do it for real. And then you see, like, the, re the reality of all the different moving parts within the industry that obviously you don't, you don't know about when you're younger. Even when you're training, you don't know about it to the same degree. And even the week before I got the job, I was sitting there going, I genuinely, I don't know what my place is. I don't know if I, I love it so much, but I don't know how much of a point there is in me doing it. So I feel like this is a cop out to your answer a little bit where I genuinely mean it when I say, I don't know where I'm where I'll see my career in five years but I can say from not just talking to myself but talking to you know other friends that work in the industry and what everybody goes through um I hope whatever wherever I am whatever place I'm at that I'm happy and at peace and I and I would say that for all, all my friends in the industry wherever they they are in five years as well that they're happy and at peace Hay que felicitarla. Bravo. Bueno, Amy, este es tu espacio para que digas tus redes sociales, un saludo para Colombia, invita a la gente a que vea yo, uy, Chapter 4, y bueno, unas palabras que quiera decir. Le diré que ya te dije que las subas cuanto antes. Ajá. Ok, algo es telling John that. He, oh, I know he got a lot of interviews to uh, did. In fact, uh, we're happy and humbled that you are here on the channel. This is a beautiful project for the love of cinema. So the camera is yours. Uh, uh, tell your social media so people can follow you. Uh, send a big hi to Colombia. Invite people to watch John Wick Chapter 4. Do whatever you want. Ah, okay. Um, well, you can find me on social media under M.A. Kwan. That's just my name. Um, uh, hola, Colombia. Uh, muchas gracias. And uh, I want to say, I'm going to, I'll say this very quickly. You can cut this. I understand Spanish, but I'm a terrible speaker. Of, like, día por día no, 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 no hablo. Hablas so, bonito. Ay, well. ay, pero no, no. Um, puedo, puedo leer. Y escri escribir, that's why I think I wrote to you a little bit at some point. But no, ¿En where, where do, no you, where do you learn? ¿En where uh, do you learn? You do it well. Ah, muchas gracias. So, um, but I'm, you know, I'm honored to be able to 
talk to you guys to to be able to I guess reach out to people in Latin America that that means a lot to me so thank you as well for having me before I we take the picture for sharing this interview where do you learn the, to to speak Spanish and told you do it well where I poco en escuela pero hoy yo I, I I read a lot I love to read so I read a lot myself so that's that's more hence I can read and write okay but I don't speak it a lot bueno super now I can say I got a picture with Mia from John ah. <laughs> no it's, it's, it, in fact I was talking with a friend and we were talking that the two best sagas from action the last years are John Witt and Jeff mm. Hitman so that's the reason wow. why I love yeah, they're the two best you know I um after uh, during London I spoke to um Natalia Tenno who's in the movie you'll see her in the movie and she was saying as well that she she feels like the impact how great the um a like the action saga John Wick 4 is so she's on board with you and I think a lot of people are absolutely yo cumplí tus sueños yo también lo que quieres <laughs> Por supuesto. No, yo quisiera pues agradecerte, decirle que muchas gracias y no, bienvenida siempre al canal. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you both so much. It's it's been a pleasure. No, the pleasure is ours. Es nuestro placer. Gracias. Nah, muchas gracias. Gracias a ti. Bye. Bye. Chao. Chao. Bye.